Welcome to another Rough Guide to Midgard, a video series where I take a bit of interesting lore or a location in the Midgard campaign setting by Cobalt Press and present it to you so you might be able to use it in your games. And today I want to talk about the City of Freedom in the Southlands, otherwise known as Malmet. Hi there fellow role players and game masters, my name is Mr. Tarosk and this is still your go-to YouTube channel for everything Cobalt Press and everything Midgard. And today I want to talk about the Freedom City, uh, which is otherwise known as Malmet. It is a city in the Southlands campaign setting by Cobalt Press. Uh, it is located on a very strategic point within the map and it has a very strategic place. And the reason I want to talk about it, quick shout out to a Discord user, Discord user on my Discord channel. You can join that by clicking the link in the description below everybody's welcome we can chat we can do whatever you want and he pointed the city out to me because it is a really good extension to a video i've already done about the Estigal raiders uh if you haven't seen that video go and check it out click it somewhere here but long story short the Estigal raiders are a bunch of pirates that uh, are former slaves and they do nothing else than just go and free slaves everywhere in the southlands and the most of those slaves then join that army join that fleet the fleet becomes stronger and they can even uh, free more slaves and the uh, Malmet, the city of freedom, Malmet in the Southlands actually ties into that really well but that is not the only reason I want to talk about it. I personally had never heard about the city. There's so many interesting places in the Midgard campaign setting. There's so much more to talk about, but this one piqued my interest because my the, the Discord user uh, pointed it out to me and there's already a very small section about the city in the Midgard world book, uh, but it's like only like a few words written about it. But in the uh, Midgard, uh, the Southlands book, there is uh, much more written. Although it's still quite a small section, uh, there is just just enough information to make the city really interesting, a really good point for, to get your uh, players to that city and to uh, start off uh, adventures within that city and in the Southlands. So let's get into the City of Freedom, otherwise known as Malmet, uh, see where it is located, uh, what its function is, what adventures and adventure hooks there are there, and one very good published adventure from Cobalt Press that's actually set within the Freedom City, otherwise known as Mallet. Mal... Mal... Malmet. Malmet is located, as you can see, on a coastline. Not only that, it is located in a very strategic position. Uh, it is very close to the island of Shibai. And if you want to know more about this island of Shibai, check the link uh, within the description or somewhere around here about the Estigal Raiders. Because the Estigal Raiders are very active around this area, freeing slaves. And there's actually a big slave revolt going on around here. Or that just happened like 14 days ago when you read the Southlands book. Uh, so the city of Malmet attracts all kinds of people and that's not only because of its geographical uh, position that's also uh, because um, around here there are tons of tons of like pirates merchants there are adventurers there's evil people plot schemers uh, people that are looking for thieves people that are looking for bandits whatever all those people basically like it's it's like the cantina from a new hope or it's, it's like that port city from Pirates of the Caribbean of, I can't remember its name. It's that's what how I'm imagining it. They call it uh, uh, the free city or or the lawless city or whatever. And all those people go there. By the way, there aren't really rules. There's only like thieves' codes and guidelines within the city. Although there is a, a an organization that rules over a Malmet. It is. Not a gigantic city, but it's also not a small city. Also, a word stating Malmet is a ver it sits at the end of a trade route, route a land trade route that goes all the way from here, all the way uh, to Nura Natal, which is of course um, the most famous spot in uh, the Southlands because it has Parabastad. So it goes all the right way around here and it stops um, here in Sap Sap. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sap 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 Sap. I don't know. Sounds really, really weird. But there is this really important trade route in the north of the Southlands uh, that this sits in. So Malmet doesn't only have all kinds of people because there is a big trade route and it attracts all kinds of people. But it also has all kinds of goods. Like there's really exotic goods that are 
for sale up for grabs in Melmets and one of them by the way is drugs. Drugs are really a thing in uh, Melmet. Also it's really close to the Shibai Island like I said so it can do trade with that and it is on a coastline so trading across a coastline is very important which makes it all a, a very good position to have on the map. So let's talk about the city itself and how it kind of works. So if you go to page 157 in your Southlands uh, book, you can see that there is an entire section, three pages long, almost about uh, Malmet, the city of freedom. And it has, uh, of course, uh, first of all, it has a map for the city, and that's what Cobalt Press does very well. There's so many cities in Midgard, but they have so many maps for all those cities. I don't know how they do it. So there is a map with a bunch of interesting places to go, and there's three pages about this city, but it's it's very confined, everything they say about the city, but super interesting and it spawns such a super amount, big amount of great ideas uh, to put in your game. It has this bit of artwork for the city, but I'm going to say right now it doesn't do it justice i'm sorry this artwork is amazing uh this is like a piece they talk about how the streets and everything are really dark and everywhere you you walk there is markets and there's merchants trying to sell you uh exotic goods and you can also see there's all kinds of people there for example i think we're seeing a dwarf speaking to somebody that might come from the south or whatever with a bunch of uh, of their goods with their caravan and they're trying to sell stuff from a dark alleyway maybe Maybe, maybe they have a horse on the other side of the cart and they're just ready to jump into the cart and run away when somebody comes and tells them uh, they can't do what they're doing. But this doesn't do it justice because, for example, there are a bunch of places and a bunch of stuff where they talk about how there's palm trees, how there is a beautiful casino-like type structure where people want to go. Uh, there are... Um, like taverns and and places guild halls and everything that are really beautifully decorated and i just think it is a lost opportunity from cobalt press to have like one bit extra piece of artwork for that now that said there is a book called midgard sagas and they actually have a level 5 adventure set in this city that has a bit of artwork some more artwork that really does the city justice and i will talk about that in a minute i just want to talk about what the city uh like three or four like one two three or four interesting places you might want to visit within this city one of the most important things they talk about for some reason is the drug use in the city. There is a substance that people inhale which they call dream smoke and it gives you, like they say, a highly addictive drug that causes euphoria. And there is one place called the House of Blue Smoke that is actually, there is a lot of these dens around the city where people can go and inhale this, uh, this type of drug. But for, there are like places people go to have like the highest quality it's like with weed right you go to a place where you can get the highest quality of weed and you pay like 10 euros or 10 bucks for like one joint or whatever and then you go to another place it's like dark and there's shit on the floor and you pay like 10 dollars for a bag full of weed which is of way less qu quality than i'm speaking as if i know this stuff but I uh, anyway, there is a section about blue smoke, uh, the den of the house of the blue smoke, which is one of those dark and gritty uh, places where only like the most addicted people go. So it's that type of city that even plays into that. Um, you have like these places where maybe the noble people go and they have a lot of money and every now and then they go out and they have a bit of that dream smoke and they just inhale it, have a good time. They go back home to their families or whatever, to their businesses and they go on with their lives. And then there's people who fall victim to this stuff, uh, lose everything and they are welcome in the house of blue smoke to spend every last bit of coin they have to get even higher which is uh what makes like this is a small section in the book it only is the, like this big um and there's this bit and that's it really make gives you a feeling of how the city doesn't give one single f about who you are where you come from what you're doing in the city as long as you're spending coin talking about coin let's talk about the rulers of the city 
Malmut is ruled by an organization called the Black Table, and they are basically the Mafia, right? They are a bunch, like a dozen or so raiders, thieves, uh, pirates, uh, caravan raiders, and other types of bad people that come together, sit around a Black Table, and they make decisions for the city. And they're actually the people who, that keep the city running. And what they do is, first of all, they demand money from everything, everybody, everywhere. They keep, like... Like, they're like the mafia they go they send out raiding parties in order to collect taxes so to speak uh, for protection uh, for like if you have an inn within the city and you don't want a suddenly somebody to break in and smash the thing to pieces and you want protection from that you will have to pay to the black table of course it's all an organization and there's a lot of going on underneath it but everything everything is about coin within the city of freedom if you are spending coin you are there nobody will bother you if you are withholding your coin they will come at you and they will grab the coin from you and they will uh, put it in like one of those tiny really nice packages of like we're going to protect you because you're paying taxes to us welcome to the city that kind of stuff I really love this uh, this mafia feel that the that the city leaders actually have so there is a city but it's almost it's not officially a city with like mayor and 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 the leader and there is there is other political figures it's just a bunch of bad people that came together and like this is our hellhole and everybody who wants to use this hellhole is going to pay up now, if you're looking to start an adventure within the Southlands, within the east part of the Southlands, maybe, this city is perfect. Have your characters go to a place called Sandalwood House. Sandalwood House is a sort of, they call it a social club slash guild hall where you can go in. And here is where all the thieves and all the raiders and everybody sit around tables and plot schemes together. Nobody's really like attacking each other or killing each other each other whatever it's basically if you're looking for a job to raid or whatever you go there and somebody will probably hire you and you just start to talk to the right people and it is ex exactly in this place uh, first of all the city is geographically placed very well to start an adventure because from here there's a lot of roads going wherever you want your players to go or the sea or islands at the other side of the sea, like on the sea, not on the other side of the sea, because that's just mainland, islets are on the sea. So it's geographically placed very well, and this uh, sandalwood house is placed very well within the city, and it's, ex it's exactly this guild hall that spawns the adventure from the Midgard sagas. Midgard Sagas is a book with a bunch of sagas placed in Midgard. They are a bunch of one-shots that can be played like mostly in one session, sometimes maybe three, uh, two or three sessions if you want to spread it out a little bit. And one of them is called the Melmoth Heist. It is an Ocean's Eleven type feeling adventure. I'm telling you that. It is really cool, really well written, and it is set in the city of Melmoth. So it is the perfect place to start your players off in the Southlands. Uh, the Melmoth house, also I talked earlier in this video where there is artwork within this book that uh, represents the city even more in my brains, in my imagination, uh, and I was talking about this artwork. Basically, the adventure is a heist, uh, and it's a really cool uh, story, right? So, um, there is this club called the Saloon of Mysteries, which is basically a casino. As you can see, there is this uh, dwarf type person. He's gambling, but he's also drinking. There's like half naked women walking around, uh, seducing the uh, people, making sure they drink even more. And people can eat there. They can feast there. They can drink there. They can gamble there. They can, I don't know procreate there whatever they want to do there they can do there but there is another uh in or another like thing that happens and it is called the lounge of a thousand whispers that is a new lounge that opened just a little bit further away and they 
basically want the Saloon of Mysteries to go out of business. So what they are doing is they are sending like people to the street in front of the Saloon of Mysteries to like bug people that come out or rob them and to try like they're doing all kinds of stuff just to slowly get them out of business. They try to catch them with like illegal activity in order to get them out of business and all that stuff. And it is well, the owner of the Saloon of Mysteries is just fed up with that. So what he does is he goes to uh, the place that I talked before, the guild hall, where the players can go for a job. And he's looking for a few people, I don't know, maybe a fifth level party of players somewhere around your table who want to go to the Lounge of a Thousand Whispers and do a heist. I'm not going to say more about that, but it is a heist. There is combat in it, if you want there to be. Uh, it is really cool. It is a heist. You go through the like gaming floors, uh, kitchens, uh, multiple private rooms, dressing rooms, guard rooms, guest rooms, um, counting rooms where they count the money and everything. So it is a heist that your players can do. And it is a really good introductory campaign, uh, sorry, adventure that you can run uh, if you want to start off in the Southlands and use this city kind of like your home base for your players although very dangerous and expensive to be there for your players to start and maybe uh, move from when they play in the Southlands and that was everything I wanted to say about the City of Freedom otherwise known as Melmet it was a rough guide uh, again so I'm not going super deep into the lore I'm just trying to take little bits of information and present that on, on to you on a silver platter so to speak if you like this content make sure to like and subscribe to the video uh, comment below what you want to see about the Midgard world and until next video bye bye